Hey, welcome back to How to Build a Persona, this time featuring Matador. There's going to be a little bit of a crossover. If you know what I mean, you know what I mean. Don't worry though, if you don't know, I'll try to explain everything concisely. So without further ado, let's start with analyzing Matador. Matador is a level 17 persona with one of, if not the highest agility stat for personas around that level. He also has a good amount of magic stat, strength stat, and below average endurance and luck. He has great affinity to win, blocking every win attack directed to him, but in turn is weak to electric damage. That being said, his choice of magic skill does not correlate to what affinity he has, having psychokinetic skills instead of win skills. This is actually a pretty common thing for Persona, or to an extent, the Shin Megami Tensei series to have clashing themes on their skills and their affinity. But if you've heard of Matador in the Shin Megami Tensei series before, you'd absolutely know of him in a certain game. Matador is an infamous boss battle encounter in Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne. He is regarded by many to be the first roadblock you'll encounter in that game because his boss fight is quite a hard one. I'm not gonna dig deep into the history of the boss fight itself back in Nocturne, but the demon itself that you can get in Nocturne is a great example of how we can build Matador in Persona 5 Royal. From what we can get from Nocturne's Matador, he has pretty much the same stats allocation, being mostly on agility. His skills are Mazan, Andalusia, Dekunda, Focus, Taunt, and Red Capote. There's a lot of skills here that differ from what Persona 5 Royal has, so I'll explain what the unique skills do. Mazan is an all-target elemental skill that deals force damage. In the Shin Megami Tensei series, Zan is regarded to be the exact other version of Garu. The mainline Shin Megami Tensei series will prefer to use Zan, but Persona will prefer to use Garu instead. Despite that, these are regarded to be interchangeable. Andalusia is a multi-hit physical attack to random foes. In Nocturne, there's no telling how many hits there are because there's a lot of hits on that skill. Focus is a skill that boosts the caster's next physical damage. Focus is, in a nutshell, the exact same thing that Charge does in Persona 5 Royal. Taunt in Nocturne is different from Persona 5 Royal's Taunt. Instead of an ailment skill that inflicts rage, it is a debuff support skill that decreases all enemies' defense but increases their attack as well. There is a catch to that skill, but it's justifiable from the buff slash debuff system that Nocturne had, which is the stackable buff slash debuff system. Buffs slash debuffs in Nocturne are stackable to 4 levels, meaning that, for example, you can stack up attack buffs from Tarukaja up to 4 times, making the effectiveness of the buff to be 4 times as large. Furthermore, Buffs and debuffs in Nocturne can't expire in contrast with Persona 5 Royal's buff and debuff system, and they also already affect all allies for buffs and all enemies for debuffs. This whole system makes the buff and debuff support skills very strong and makes the game revolve around it, which is why skills like Dekunda and Dekaja are very good in Nocturne, which fortunately Matador has that too. And then that leaves us to the last skill that needed to be explained, Red Capote. Red Capote is a support skill that increases Matador's agility to the maximum level. Considering that buffing support skills are very strong, Red Capote is the core of Matador. Matador is a demon or a persona that focuses on buffing himself and debuffing his enemies, which results in quite possibly dodging nearly all attacks while also hitting all of your multi-hit attacks. With all of these skills for Nocturne covered, we can use this as the blueprint of how we can build Matador in Persona 5 Royal. Mazan can be gained as Magaru, and the Lucia can be gained as any multi-hit physical attacks, Dekunda is, well, Dekunda, Focus is Charge, Taunt can be gained with Maracunda, 
and the red capote is as simple as Sukukaja. With all that laid out in the blueprint, let's start building our Matador as a persona in Persona 5 Royal. We can build our Matador to follow the blueprint that we made from Nocturne's Matador, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's talk about how we should fuse to get Matador. From what I can get from the fusion combo to get Matador, there are two fusion combos that can be considered that have the skills from the blueprint that we made. These combos are Mokoi and Regent, or Ame no Uzume and Kelpi. Considering Matador already learns Sukukaja innately, Ame no Uzume and Kelpi's fusion combo is primarily for inheriting Magaru from Ame no Uzume and at the same time, it also offers some type of element coverage as well with Mazio. However, the Mokoi and Regen fusion combo is way better in a lot of ways. Mokoi offers Dekunda, which is a skill that was on the blueprint, but also offers Tarukaja, a good attack buff, and also a dodge Alex skill that allows you to have double the evasion against electric skills, which is nice especially because Matador is weak to electric. Furthermore, fusing with Regen allows you to inherit a vast amount of elemental skills, including Magaru and every other all-target elemental skills. In contrast to Ameno Uzume, who offers only Mazio as the additional elemental skill. So let's set the scene here. We were going to fuse a level 14 Mokoi and Regent. The skill choices that I think are mandatory to inherit to Matador are Magaru, Dekunda, and dodge alike. This fusion will allow you one more skill to inherit normally. With that, I think it is better to inherit Tarukaja as the last skill to inherit. However, you'll get the choice of coverage as well because fusing with Regent gives you the option to inherit all other light damage elemental skill, so you can pick whatever you want. This is one of the examples of how a level 22 Matador can be built after fusion. This is considering the skills that Matador will learn as well as he levels up. This Matador has Magaru, Mapc, Swift Strike, Double Shot, Sukukaja, Tarukaja, Dekunda, and Dodgealak, with Potent Hypnosis as his trait. I've decided to pick both Magaru and Mapc for coverage sake which makes Matador great for dealing both Wind and Psychokinesis damage whenever needed. Swift Strike and Double Shot are multi-hit physical attacks akin to Andalusia. I've decided to pick both of them for coverage stake again, and the fact that it has different targeting. Double Shot only targets one enemy, while Swift Strike targets all enemies. Sukukaja is the core of how Matador is played. He will be a persona that allows you to dodge every attack possible, and with the help of dodge Alex skill, the survivability against Matador's weakness, should be better with the higher chance of dodging electric attacks. Tarukaja is there as an additional tool for offensive capabilities, and Dekunda is for when the enemies are starting to do a lot more debuff skills against you. I might have to explain a little bit about the trait that Matador has, since apparently it is one of the most misunderstood things in the game because of the poor wording. So there are two traits that I wanna discuss. Internal Hypnosis and Potent Hypnosis. Internal Hypnosis was worded to insinuate that support skills durations are extended when targeting themselves, and Potent Hypnosis extends when it targets allies. I found this Reddit post that summarized all of it correctly. So basically, Internal Hypnosis extends support skills that are targeted to Joker, and Potent Hypnosis extends support skills that are sourced from Joker. So in the case of Matador, the duration of buffing skills that Matador has will extend for Joker and other allies as long as the skill is from Matador. Therefore, the potent hypnosis trait is best picked because of the overabundance of buffing skills that Matador has, and it is great on the occasion when you need to buff your teammates instead of yourself. With the level 22 Matador built, let's try to upgrade skills to make these skills better for high level gameplay. First, you should be upgrading your Magaru and Mapsi skills along the way while you're leveling up. It is your choice to pick the single target version of that skill, like Garula or Garudine, but for this build, 
I will choose to upgrade with the all target variant. Magarula can be obtained from itemizing Anzu on a fusion alarm. Magarudine can be obtained from itemizing Garuda on a fusion alarm. And lastly, Vacuum Wave, a severe wind damage skill, can be obtained using the Gallo system with either a level 87 Baal or Hastur as sacrifice. For Psychokinesis skills, Mapsio can be obtained from either a Treasure Demon Orlov or a Red Rider using the Gallo system. Mapsiodine can be obtained either from Parvati using the Galo system or by itemizing Fornius on a fusion alarm. Then, Psycho Blast is either from a level 88 Shiva or a level 91 Geo using the Galo system. Next are the physical and gun skills. I'd imagine that the gun skills will be given up later on, so Matador will only have the physical skills. But I'll give some examples of gun skills that you can upgrade to in case you want gun skills. Triple Down is a good upgrade. You can get Triple Down from itemizing Shiki OG on a fusion alarm. Then, One Shot Kill can be obtained from itemizing Yamata no Orochi on a fusion alarm, and Riot Gun from Cuckoo Line on a fusion alarm. For physical skills, I'll only give some examples of multi-hit physical skills that you can upgrade Swift Strike into because there's a lot of different physical skills in this game. Tempest Slash is a good example. You can get Tempest Slash using the Gallo system by sacrificing either a level 43 Ose or a level 43 Kumbanda, or by itemizing Dakini outside of a fusion alarm. Gatling Blows, which weirdly enough is available only from Hecaton Harris on level 49, so you'll need to use the Gallo system. Deathbound can be obtained from itemizing Algiri Mechkala on a fusion alarm. And lastly, Myriad Slashes can be obtained from itemizing Dakini on a fusion alarm. Next, for the support skills, Tsukukaja can be upgraded to either Masukukaja or Heat Riser. I'd imagine Heat Riser is better since it offers more than agility, but in case you'd want Masukukaja instead, Masukukaja can be obtained from Anzu using the Gallo system. Heat Riser can be obtained from itemizing Magatsu Izanagi Picaro outside of a fusion alarm. Tarukaja before was used as a placeholder for Charge, since the blueprint for Matador has Charge as well. Charge can be obtained using the Gallo system with the level 27 Setanta as the sacrifice. And let's not forget that the blueprint of our Matador has a Maracunda as the persona equivalent to Taunt. This is why I'd prefer to give up a gun skill because of the skill slot limitation. Fortunately, Maracunda is easier to get since it is available from itemizing Orobas on a fusion alarm, or use the Gallo system if you rather do that instead. And lastly, the Dodge Alec passive skill can be upgraded with multiple approaches. Nullifying the electric weakness is one of those options. Null Alec can be obtained from a level 55 Barong using the Gallo system, or by itemizing mod. The other approach, however, is by upgrading that dodge alec to another passive skill that increases your evasion. Evade alec is an option, but what I'm talking about is either Angelic Grace or Ali Dance. For this particular build, I'd go for Ali Dance instead. Ali Dance can be obtained from a level 79 Gabriel or Raoul using the Gallo system. Angelic Grace is either from a level 77 Sandalphon, level 83 Shrausha, or a level 85 Uriel using the Gallo system. And that concludes the upgrades that can be achieved to get a pretty strong Matador. This is the example of the skill allocation for a high level Matador. This Matador has Vacuum Wave, Psycho Blast, Myriad Slashes, Heat Riser, Charge, Maracunda, Dekunda, and Ali Dance. And this is how I built Matador. Thanks for watching. See ya.